Welcome to the Three Layouts Tour featuring Joe Binish, Bill Sampson, and Ken Ziska. Joe's going to cover the C of M, Bill Sampson's going to cover the GN in 1970, and Ken Ziska is going to show us that there's more than three people that enjoy modeling S scale. Enjoy part two of three. The Three Layout Tour, the Three Layout Tour. This is the GN 1970, it is the Great Northern. Um, he's modeling the merger of uh, the Great Northern, the NP, SPNS. Um, who am I missing? CB. CB and Q. So those railroads all came together in the summer of uh, 1970. So that's kind of loosely where he's at. Uh, and I always kind of refer to this as my dad's railroad because obviously it's in the basement of the home that I grew up in. Uh, but Colin, he's uh, Colin Mueller is an electrician that he's done a lot of this work. The majority, if not all of the wiring underneath it has all been done by Colin. Anything that wasn't done by him was hacked in by me. And uh, by Colin's standards, he does such a nice job in terms of uh, how he ties all the wires together. Anything that looks out of sorts and it doesn't look very well, uh, or it doesn't look tidy, that was me. So I, I you can't fault Colin for that. We do have uh, an EMD locomotive, an old EMD locomotive wire that is a, a harness that is chiming through here. And I don't know if I'm able to kind of give you guys a look at that in a moment, but we are ran, um, our bus wires are EMD powered, so it's kind of cool to have uh, some locomotive wiring. He's working his way up the grade. I'm just going to start this out here. The locomotives that are passing Westminster here, this is um, the beginning of lines east uh, for the visual staging. I'm going to pop you guys off of the tripod and bring you around. So if you have any questions as it goes along, I'm going to kind of take a look as we go. But let's take a look at uh, the lines east. So hopefully we're a little bit smoother here, folks. This is, uh, it's working through Union, but what I want to do is I'm going to duck underneath and give you guys a look at where our Lions East staging starts. So we have a panel back here. I've crawled into the corner of the room, but there's a panel that controls East staging. We have uh, engine cards. We don't use car cards anymore. We have engine cards that tell us train 81, uh, train 35. He notes the consists that we're working with. And then the staging, if I can get it up in here, this is the Lions East staging. Pull that focus into effect a little bit, but you get the idea. It's three tracks wide. If anybody is planning a railroad, this is the one area that uh, both Colin and my dad can agree that they wish they would have had more space um, between the decks. Because if there is a derailment, it makes it kind of tough to reach into. But you get the idea as far as Lions East itself. And I'm not going to duck back in here again, but I want to give you a look. The most recent panel we put in was this one right here. This is the engine facility panel. Uh, this is Union Yard. Gives you an idea. Just uh, This would be a, a fantastic position to be in, which is the Hostler. You get this vantage point. We, we think this is one of the cool um, views of the railroad, as well as swinging around. The elevators that you see are representing Union Yard. And then that's kind of the look into uh, the trim job would run these particular, there's an elevator here, and then obviously the industries in the distance. So to give you a feel for it, anybody that wonders where these silos came from, uh, my dad works for a company that made airbags. They are vehicle airbags. And uh, he repurposed them into silos, which makes kind of a, uh, a cool, they are aluminum. And if they're, he's got them stuck together. Otherwise they, they are aluminum themselves. There is I think this is a, a bolt mount here, but you get an idea. This is a uh, Jeff Dombrowski elevator that we picked up at one of the local shows. We're going to duck underneath here and give you a look at what we recently had worked on, and that was the scenery coming up here in Westminster. So Westminster Tower, if anybody's familiar with that in the Twin Cities, it was kind of in a uh, can of worms between the NP, the CNW, and the Great Northern. But this is our, our most recent endeavor, and that's been static grass. It's not 100% accurate. We know there should be a, a window here and the backside. Um, who had built the tower? Neil Hoven. Neil Hoven. Is it Hoven or Hoven? Hoven. <laughs> Neil, uh, if you ever are familiar with the, uh, the Twin Cities flea, market. flea markets, Neil is a, we'll consider him kind of a building guy. But as we kind of swing around and look a little bit further here, that train that swung through, as we mentioned, this is Union Yard. 
I'm going to ask a question to the group and uh, let you guys throw out your guesses. But as you kind of look over the railroad itself, one of the things I feature in a lot of videos are the vehicles that I've done. How many vehicles do you think are on the railroad? You can throw guesses out, and if uh, somebody gets close, I'll, I'll give you an idea. I'll tell you. But you see all the vehicles that are in here. This is a, uh, a busy, busy day in Minneapolis. <laughs> Got a lot of cars that are in here. We do have a tribute to my Uncle Dick uh, up in Superior, Wisconsin. He owned a pure gas station, so that's the representation of why pure oil is represented. And he's kind of got, uh, there's a, one of the tow trucks I had done. Uh, he's, he's got <laughs> the, the monster truck. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't recognize that uh, Dick worked on monster trucks, but that's represented there. Uh, the engine facility that we just recently had looked at. And as you can see in the corner, that's where I had popped up and had given that view of Union Yard. Boy, got some guys guessing 2,000 vehicles. That was a little high. Kurt at 225. You're probably halfway there. The rolling stock on the railroad, we are north of 450. So to give you an idea of how many cars are on the railroad, which it can be a little bit of a juggernaut, Union is extremely full at the moment. Um, as we try to always lean towards the capacity of a rough, what, it's a 70-30, a so 30 free space. 70% occupancy, and it probably should be more 60-40. Brian, you might be able to add a Ford plant. He says maybe you could add a Ford plant. And for some of the guys that have looked at uh, the auto racks, there is a, a couple of auto racks here that are Fords. The representation in the background there is St. Anthony Elevator that's printed uh, photos mounted to Masonite to be able to give the representation of St. Anthony Elevator 1 in Union Yard. Uh, locomotives and decoders, uh, we've been leaning towards ESU uh, as well as Loc uh, Sound, which is the same thing. Uh, tsunami is the other, as I was thinking. Chris had asked if this was the paddle auger. That's not what the Great Northern referred to. It is actually a snow clearer. I called it the paddle auger. But that... <laughs> That is the uh, the brass unit that my dad had picked up. Uh, it is custom painted. I think it's factory. Oh, is it? Uh, it's factory. I believe those are factory. Factory Overland. Yes. I did. I custom painted the uh, the transfer caboose. There is a transfer caboose in that string. But as we uh, we continue across here. Killing the superior train. Yeah, you probably can. Let it go. Kill it on. Line. I'll follow it down here. So we're going to actually take a look. We're going to stop this train um, in a moment, but I'm going to pan across as we go past the Minneapolis, the city itself. I'm going to just follow the train. We'll come back to where we're at here. But this train is taking the superior line. So when we do run a superior turn, um, this is where it heads to or comes from. Train 54, train 53. I believe it's 154 and 153 that we're modeling uh, on our schedules, we call it 53 and 54 for our throttle purposes. For consist. For consisting, because you can't be consist beyond 128. So we go through and we look at these here. Some of the trees we've done uh, lately, I'll point out here in just a moment. That has been another upgrade that we've kind of been working on. That will then go into that portal, give you a, an aerial view of the town that's through here. And then we'll come back and see these guys coming underneath the bridge. And that's going to head back into the Lions East staging. We are using all code 100 on the railroad. You'll see periodically code 83. In the yard. Then the yard up in Wilmer. As well as, uh, I believe you have used some over in um, Lindale. Lindale area. But as we duck underneath, you can see in the foreground a couple of servos. We're transferring from those um, Pico turnouts and we're switching over to these uh, to the servos just for reliability and we can always adjust the throw. That's then programmed and powered by a uh, Tam Valley decoder that's sitting down in there with an OCK decoder. So we do have um, that wired up as well as these two crossovers. Uh, they're, they're powered with the servo setup. 
But going back to where we were, and that was here in Union, we did look at the uh, the passenger station. We do run an Empire Builder. As you can see, the SDP-45s, those are made by Athern. They both have Tsunami Sound, and um, they are pulling the Empire Builder, which we will eventually get up and running. Um, Dwayne, a fellow Great Northern modeler, uh, has kind of shown us up a little bit by running his Empire Builder wide open in reverse on his railroad. Bulletproof trackage, because uh, Dwayne's a great modeler, but uh, that's what you have to aspire to. We're having some issues with how well the Walther's uh, cars track. There are some issues periodically, but a few of you have shared some uh, some techniques that you use to be able to improve that. The layout construction, Corey, is a great question. Uh, the layout construction began in 1992. Um, the original railroad, if we swing around here, I'm going to pull back. There's a divider here. This divider ends at this wall. So inside this room, the railroad is within these parameters here. So that just gives you an idea where the old railroad was. It got torn down. Uh, Colin was going to a, a school that had a, access to a CAD system, and he then designed this layout. Now, the original layout didn't include the helix, and it didn't include that entire upper level, as well as uh, Wilmer Yard, which is behind me and we'll eventually get to. Um, I'll talk about how that kind of got brought in as well. Appreciate the compliment, Brian, on the uh, the Minneapolis Depot. It's got a little ways to go in regards to getting this thing. We want to cover it in brick and, and give it the look of Minneapolis Depot. But as so much technology evolves, uh, we have a hard time keeping up sometimes as modelers. This is Minneapolis. And, uh, and Kurt, you were counting. You were at 225. I think you got you to gotta keep counting here. If you keep throwing the numbers in, anybody that's guessing a vehicle number, I'll I'll tell you when we get near the end of this video. I'm going to pop on to the other side of this backdrop because we're just heading through with this would be Dinky Town, and we are going into what will be Lindale. You want to pull, should I follow the train? Sure. He's going to actually pull out a local here, and we'll follow it once uh, once it gets over there. These two units are uh, Genesis, Athern. They do have sound. The tail, uh, the caboose on this particular train has a uh, resistors on it so I'm going to demonstrate you guys the I'm going to demonstrate the um, occupancy system that's set up but I'm going to swing around to the other side so as these guys are leaving Union we'll let you guys see them head on out Kurt you're still shy Kurt's at 440 vehicles He's still a little bit short. Are you visually counting those and that's just where you're at right now? My dad and I, we took the opportunity one time and we both collectively counted how many 187 scale vehicles there are on the entire railroad. You're going to see the uh, the pair of units are working along the back track there. Now Matt, Matt just got greedy and threw 600 in there. That's a little high. Mike Slater, you dialed it right in. You might have been paying attention to previous videos. Mike, Mike Slater might be the winner. He's got it at 538, which is very specific. We're going to head into Lindale, just in, through the portal on the right-hand side here. Sure. So here these guys are coming in to Lindale. Uh, Lindale Yard is actually a pretty good job to have. We're uh, fortunate enough to have a couple of operators. Uh, Darren has operated here. Dustin has operated here, as well as Troy LaCroix. You guys uh, collectively have always done a nice job working within this yard. John wants to see the uh, maximum speed of the Athern GP9s. <laughs> if you want to just hold, hold the train there for the moment, because we won't follow it all the way through. I want to look at, this is uh, Lindale Yard. The jobs that we run out of here, uh, other than taking care of the local, which we're currently running right now, uh, the back section there we consider the north uh, trim. So the north trim would, would handle all the industries that we've got across the back here. We've got Space Center. We ended up looking up on, uh, there was a spine that you had from the BN. Was it spin? The, uh, the BN... Um, reference sheet that we got the names of most of these industries other than T&B Wholesale. That's after Teresa and Bill. From Kevin Foley. Yep, Kevin Foley. 
had gotten, uh, this is the spin that we referenced to get the accurate names to the industries on our railroad. So a big thanks to Kevin. Um, research and history is always of interest and anybody that's wondering where we get our information, this is his library. Uh, we have a lot of information that we reference. The best books, in my opinion, are this set right here, the Scott Thompson um, books in, in regards to uh, freight cars. So if you're trying to get accurate to your railroad, I still don't, I don't think print is completely dead. I bought a set of these myself, and um, Scott did a phenomenal job in regards to uh, the history and information. Um, Bill Brillinger noted their, their spins, and that's exactly what, uh, what we were referencing to get the names of our towns. Now, as we swing around here, we're going to give you a look at, um, this is the m &S interchange on the front two tracks, and the back track is that, uh, the trim that we, we run. We do have the, uh, display case that he's got locomotives that either need work, um, or just his, his first train is the one through the center here. That he had as a kid. This is not a picture of him. Some of you guys are going to recognize who this is, and you're going to tell me <laughs> who is this? Casey Jones. Casey Jones. Watch with Casey. I'm not old enough to remember that. Channel 11 at noon every day, weekdays. And his cringe worthy uh, workbench. We always look at the projects that are in process. Yeah. That's uh, That's where all the magic happens, as they say. I left it this way for Greg Smith because he commented uh, the last time they were here that it was too neat. It's too neat. Because I cleaned it up just for the guys coming over. So Well, you're not alone because I, I've seen a lot of guys post their uh, their workbenches and they look very similar. Mike, key, uh, keen eye on the Lionel. Ah, uh, yes. He noted that they're Lionel. This yes. was a DC system. So this was the DC panel for Lindale Yard. No longer works other than the function of the Y. That's the only thing that we're currently using, and we do have a reverser to put in, which will eliminate that. But I'm going to swing you guys around, and Mike Slater hit his 538 number and didn't even see this parking lot, didn't notice the speed racer that's in the mix. But this is, uh, this is the what we consider the East Industries in Lindale. Well, Mike, you collect Lionel, you got a keen eye, my friend. The industry is in the foreground, and in the distance, you're seeing the Chicago Northwestern and Sioux Line interchange. I recently had done this, uh, the foreground with these buildings, and it's it's on Masonite, so that, that whole section technically can lift out. Uh, we recently had upgraded some buildings. Uh, the Simon scrap that is in here, again, that's off of that spins sheet to give us an idea of accurate names in the area. And then the interchange, these are our locomotive cards. Anytime somebody's trying to figure out what one goes to what, this is Consist 11, that's Consist 10. Um, if you have questions about how to function or get your locomotive running, that's a good place to start. So we're going we're gonna to join back up and see the local work its way through here. And we'll pull out of, uh, this is, again, Lindale Yard. One, one last thing to note, there was the uh, M&S custom painted caboose with the flasher. It does have a decoder in it, um, but a little bit ahead of its time because I know Atherin's now coming out with some nice stuff that have decoders in it. And we've got these guys coming through here. This would be considered, uh, I guess, essentially a St. Louis Park. Sure. We've gone silent for you just on the sound, just so it doesn't drive people too crazy. And Joel Weeks was a, uh, a Casey Jones fan. But Joel Weeks also models the 1969 uh, Great Northern Wilmer sub, so we're, we're modeling essentially the same area. We are modeling, uh, Tom, to answer your question, 1970. I want to give you a real quick look before we, uh, we pan away. These trees, he had purchased some trees that look like this here. Uh, after talking to Tom Gazer and some of his uh, Scenic Express comments he made, we ended up upgrading them to look like that there. They both look nice, but we were really pleased with kind of how these had come out, and we uh, are slowly working on upgrading the look of a lot of the trees on the railroad. But as we continue to pan around here, this is coming into Wyzetta.
This is the Wyzetta Depot made by, uh, is it HRC? Somebody's going to be able to chime in and tell me for sure. But this is a laser cut model. I did a video on it. Um, it is a fantastic model itself um, to represent the Wyzetta Depot. Um, Peterson, I believe, is the name. Take a look as this uh, train pulls into Wyzetta. Scott Peterson? No, he's a murderer. Oh, well, I did not know that. HRM, thank yes. you, Juno. That's, that's who that uh, kid is after. Now, we're going to look at here, this is Lindale. What do you got on time there, guy, on your phone? Making sure we're keeping pace here for you guys. It is 27 D minutes. Scott Peterson. It is? Yep. Oh, I take that back. <laughs> A different Scott Peterson. Um, that superior line that we mentioned. So what time is it? 27 minutes. What does that mean? It's 9 o'clock. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna be wrapping up at nine fifteen. So we got fifteen minutes to go here, as we uh, follow that train heading its way west. As I showed you guys before, as we look through this particular area, we work through the hidden staging, and that whole thing kind of passes along. I want to give you a look at a uh, panel that we. No longer use, but it, it helps troubleshoot. So anybody that's going from DC to DCC, this allows us to be able to troubleshoot to make sure that uh, we can find out where a short might be. That train is working its way through here. This is just a little peephole. And now we have found our way into Delano. So Delano, Minnesota does have uh, a depot here that we have loosely represented. Who had built the depot? Bob Niedercorn. Bob Niedercorn. Anybody that local, again, out of the Twin Cities knows Bob. Um, that depot is a wood-built kit. And it's actually Lester Prairie. That's right. <laughs> we have a Delano sign <laughs> hanging over, over it. Delano sign over it until, we, until Bill builds me a new depot. I have the depot, and maybe we'll cover that in Season 2, if not 3. Now this uh, train has found its way into the Helix, and I told you we're going to take a look in the Helix. You can see he's collected some uh, Hot Wheel cars over time, as well as some memorabilia. But as we swing around here, we're going to take a look at the Helix itself. So the signals that you see within, you see the uh, there's a, a red and a green. Right hand is your, is your green. Uh, the indication that is on both of those, you see that cluster mess of wires down on the lower part of your screen. That is not Colin's work. That is mine. I, he helped uh, get it all lined up or dialed in. But I want to give you guys a look at the occupancy on the, on the monitor here. So hit the space bar. And swing you guys in here and take a look at uh, the occupancy. So as you can see here, we're just coming into this section. And we're working our way up the helix there. We just tripped the next section. Uh, we've just knocked this one down red. We're coming onto a green. And at the top of the helix itself, I'm going to swing you guys back around again here. You can see we've got a green over red as we approach. I want to swing around here and give you guys a look at... We obviously are staring at a couple of reds that are that are protecting the helix. Um, the helix rise, as you can see here, is six six decks high. Our train is halfway up, and we're just about to knock down the next signal there. Um, Chris's question about the soldering: we do solder periodically. We do leave expansion joints. Um, there are markings inside the helix which i don't see visually right now but there are markings inside the helix that express that there is a gap, yeah. so gap. Uh, the details west signals you can see that signal just dropped to red that we're passing and as we come up here i'm going to let you guys uh, take a look at the signals up close uh, they are a nice grs signal so from a prototype standpoint this is what the great northern would have had or used they are nicely detailed I think um, we ended up with, that was a three over two, and this has got just a single three target signal. The town that you're representing here is Litchfield. 
I did briefly cover in a video uh, the process of building Litchfield. It's definitely taken some time, but we're, uh, we're, we're getting there to give it a, a little bit better look, and we'll watch the train come through here and knock down the signal. So he's going to continue himself west. The uh, Brian's asking about the entire main line being signaled. Not yet. Uh, we do have uh, a learning curve, as I mentioned. But as we swing around and take a look at uh, the signals, these are the last set of signals um, that we uh, just recently had gotten programmed. But there's one last set that uh, is currently just static because we don't have the ability to um, set up the occupancy just yet. Uh, but when, once we get the next BDL-168 in place, we will. Now these guys are again continuing west. The background was done um, by uh, Thompson. This is his last name. I can't remember his first name offhand. But we do need another one. So that one's not going to knock down because it's currently uh, not detecting occupancy on the other side of it. But that is a, uh, again, a details west signal considering, um, I think they consider it a distant signal. So we'll have to put the D on it. That's not the signal that's going to go in this place, but we're now pulling into Wilmer. So as we come into Wilmer here, we're going to pan across and get you guys a little bit elevated to give you a look. This yard uh, was at one time in St. Paul, and by that I mean it was physically down in St. Paul. Colin, our electrician, uh, we ended up taking a um, Suburban and we ran it across the tops of the seat of a Suburban, brought it in through the bathroom window upstairs, into the basement, and swung it into position to give you what you see here, Wil Wilmer Yard. Uh, the Wilmer Depot that you notice here, that was done by Neil as well. He did the Westminster building that we covered before. Uh, that train that uh, he's pulling forward there normally is going to run itself around and come back down and work the industries as it heads back. So that would be... Point to point, I'm going to take you uh, up into the upper staging just to give you guys a look at what the West End looks like. And while I head there, Tom has asked, uh, he came in late and you're modeling uh, the 1970s, where, and this is actually going to be Minneapolis, from Minneapolis to Wilmer. So here we're heading upstairs. This is the staging. And that is West Staging. So you guys have traversed point to point. You saw lines east all the way out to lines west. That in the train that we just had come in, those guys are right there. Beacon flashing. But we do have a camera system for these guys. We don't have it on right now, um, but during an operating session, we'd have a camera system that lets us see the far end of uh, the staging so we don't run into the wall. Because it has happened. But there is a foam bumper, so we so, don't damage anything. So it is protected. All right, we'll work our way back down here. As you can see, the collection of cars continues. There's some Hot Wheel cars, and it's not just trains. To give you guys just kind of an overview of the railroad itself, we'll kind of pull up. The room is uh, 22 by 22 uh, square. So you do have uh, a good amount of space that we're kind of working with. And again, the original railroad is your lower portion that we added that upper deck to be able to uh, operate point to point. Uh, that was thanks to Gary Friesman. Uh, he operates the Arkwood and Rice Creek. Operations just gave us, uh, gave the rail railroad a purpose and it kind of makes it a little bit more enjoyable for us um, to be able to have uh, an era and be able to model. So we are fully aware that it's not an exact representation of certain areas, um, but uh, in an instance like the Wyzetta Depot here, that's a great example of an iconic building that you know where you are if you see this building. Somebody came out with a kit of. <laughs> yes, a nice kit, nicely done. Um, so again, some quality work. But what are we doing, uh, what are we looking at for time here? 10 after 9. All right, we're five minutes away. I'm going to get ready to uh, 
start throwing it to Ken uh, in just a little bit. We'll give Tom some time to make sure that he's there and set up. He's going to do the camera work for, for Ken, I believe. He had to drive from Joe's to Ken's house. Yep. So he's, he's going to traverse across the railroad. Uh, the upper deck was in place when you guys uh, were on the Twin Cities tour a few years ago, and it was. That's correct, Dave. It was uh, installed. It, I believe it was done, it had to be 2005 or before, around that time, because well, I built the Helix, Helix in 2000. Yeah, yeah, um, so. But it did remain without the top portion for a little while. Um, but looking at just some of the areas that we don't normally look at here is uh, the city, cityscape. We're never quite sure what to do with this space. We've talked about turning it into nothing but trees or a farm field. and um, with, uh, with but, the. But I like cars, so I needed a place to put my cars. That's true. <laughs> like the, the, the lot of uh, Cobras. They're kit cars. Yeah. Billy's Auto was one of Bill's first kits. That he built as a kid so it's still on the railroad yeah in terms of buildings too we've been slowly upgrading them so at various shows um, if there's a kit or a building he had picked up a lot of different buildings Greg Smith had a flea market here in the cities and he had a lot of buildings at a very reasonable price and he was able to pick some up and upgrade buildings that um, are a little less traditional they're not your your same old same old buildings same with this uh, the main street kind of along here. Oh, yeah. Art Deco, plaster buildings. Same with up in Litchfield. Some, that's got to be an Art Deco building, I would guess. Yep. Who's just uh, ceased business, I, I hear. Another, uh, I think I custom, the custom truck. And we set up a little sale lot for oh, yeah. the cars that are for sale up here. Um, but otherwise, in terms of uh, the railroad itself, I did want to give you guys downtown deco is what Dave had noted. Okay. What did I say? Art? Yes, I think so. Art deco is a, deco. Yes. Deco's a type of... Uh, that was my neighbor. Um, just to give you an idea, this is the Digitrax. We have a booster system. Uh, again, Colin was post... Uh, or he did pre-DC, so he did all the DC stuff, and then I did the post, so that's why it looks like a... Uh, a hamster got in here and went nuts. All the wires are not nearly as neat as what Colin did. Um, what we've got across the, the top, the power then runs into these power shields. Uh, the power shields are, sh are sold by Tony's Trains Exchange. Uh, they work really well. They tell us when the system's down, but we have it set to main. We have Union, Lindale, and Wilmer. So that's how we, we blocked our railroad itself. As you can see, the old DC system, um, a lot of wires. Colin actually did come in and help um, streamline the process. And we, as I mentioned before, you have EMD wire to be able to, to actually power the railroad. So that's, that's kind of cool. Let you guys look at the, uh, the panel before we go. The panel itself is, uh, again, a Colin creation. And Darren's wondering where the step side truck swept, is at. Swept side. Or swept side. I've got one here. Okay, I'll swing around to the uh, the swept side truck, but before we go, I mentioned that camera before that's upstairs. Uh, it would be on the monitor on the right. And then uh, the uh, display case with what would be my grandpa's. Is that there for yes, his first yes, train? that was grandpa's. So a little bit of history involved for uh, for hanging on to your first train. I think we sold my first train at a flea market. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in large part because I said it was fine. I remember he asked. There's your uh, swept side pickup that Darren was looking for. Uh, he, Matt is actually asking, what do the blue buttons do? Or if you're referring to the, the panel, these are all rotary. That was the so that was the original DC system. Cab system. So we had a five... Uh, five cab system in some cases uh, we'd have Lindale on here as well but we set them all to B to make sure that everything is all in the B cab um, that is for the main line and then the yards themselves are are switched over accordingly so Chris uh, tell your dad I appreciate him tuning in to sue the Milwaukee Road I I'm surprised he didn't want to enjoy a live feed of of what we're we're covering here, but uh, I appreciate his viewership nonetheless. 
Anybody that might be wanting to see more of the GN in 1970, you can go onto YouTube or even just go to Google and you can type GN in 1970 and you're going to find, find us here. I'm going to set this back up on the tripod. I'm going to give uh, Ken just an opportunity to kind of get himself set up, but we'll answer any questions that anybody else still has left. Um, Brandon's asking, could you show Howard Lake again? And I'll show you Howard Lake. It's right there. It's in the helix. Um, he jumped in when we had gotten to East Litchfield. So unfortunately, Howard Lake, as well as Dassel, um, they're inside the helix. So it's not, not so scenic. But I'm going to leave this feed running just for a little bit while I, uh, I wait for Ken to be able to get himself positioned. Uh, you guys are more than welcome for the tour itself. Uh, again, this has kind of just been an impromptu thing that we've uh, decided to do. But you guys seem to be enjoying it. We've maintained 50 viewers through this entire tour, through Joe's, through last week's. Um, if guys are continuing to have interest and there are people that have uh, railroads that they want to share and show, this has just been a good way to be able to go about doing it. Um, again, this is my dad, that he's the one that has helped create some of this along with Colin, uh, myself, and uh, we're the ones that kind of get the GN 1970 up and running. I'll continue releasing new episodes on YouTube. I'll post them in uh, the Sue the Milwaukee Road, Road Face group, uh, group. And that just lets you know on a new episode. It's usually on Fridays at noon is when I put them up there. Um, I just started season two of the GN 1970. So you're going to see a number of weeks that I'll string together just some of the updates that we've been working on here. I'll cover some of the trees and the scenery that we've kind of been working on. Uh, look at some of the decoder installs. Uh, the signaling system, how CATS works. Uh, it's all, a lot of it is just a lot of content, but um, we want to try to give you guys snippets of the updates and uh, hopefully you're enjoying them as much as I'm enjoying putting them together so you guys can check them out. So we're going to take a little break here and we're going to get ready for Ken. Ken's going to be kicking off here um, in about five minutes. So at 920, if he hasn't started his live feed yet, hopefully he'll, he'll start it here soon. I got to plug my battery in because I'm at 4% on my laptop. So uh, you guys can ask questions. I'll answer them the best I can, and uh, we'll try to keep this uh, laptop up and running. Thanks a lot for watching. Yep, thanks, guys. A big thanks to my dad for taking the night to be able to be the throttle jockey while we toured the GN in 1970. If you've not seen part one, it was with Joe Binish. If you want to see part three, it's Ken Ziska taking a look at S-Scale. Be sure and subscribe to this channel if you're looking for future content that's entertaining. For three layout tour, for three layout tour.